Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again. You're watching In Deep on the Delta, and today we're going to talk about what is, or has been, my most requested subject in about the last six months. We're going to talk about moon phases. And when we talk about moon phases, we're really talking about tides, because the moon really is, is the major player when it comes to what the tides are going to be doing. So today we're going to be talking uh, about a website that I use. It's called Tides for Fishing and it has all the information that you need to plan your daily trips or plan future trips. It's got tides, moon phases, sunrises, sunsets, tidal coefficients, everything that you will need um, that we talk about in this video will be at Tides for Fishing and as we get into the video I will pull up some of the most useful pages that I use and I'll tell you what I look for uh, on these things to, to plan my trips. So with that, let's start off with a little bit of science. And I don't want to bore you here, but having a little bit of background in science will give you a, f a fundamental uh, 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 So I don't want to get really heavy into the science on this, but I'm, I'm going to blurt out some facts because I think having a little bit of background will help you understand how we look at you know the whole situation and I will say that this these this solar uh, theory is a theory science is science and, and tides and moon phases are science we, we know that but as far as the solar theory goes it is a theory it doesn't work every time so if you're just getting involved in this moon phase thing and tides and really starting to look at it it, over the course of say a week, a month, or a year, this is really going to help you. But just be aware, it, if you go out the first time and it doesn't work for you, or, or you can't see the correlation of what's going on, don't get discouraged. Keep looking at your tides, ask questions, talk to people that have been out here, uh, hit me up on, on my website, I'll try to answer any questions that you have, and, uh, and you work through it, and, and it really will help you put more fish in the boat as, you're, as you go on with this, with this theory. So, let's talk about the theory itself. It's been around for a couple thousand years, and it, it's very simple. Uh, the moon and the sun have gravitational pull on the earth. That gravitational pull creates tides. When you have certain tides, especially stronger tides, it starts to, you know, the tide starts moving, The it, it starts a food chain from the smallest bugs in the river or ocean uh, to the bait fish, and that relates to the bigger fish chasing the bait fish. It's just starting uh, a, a, an activity time when the fish are very active. So, with that in mind, here are a few facts. The moon is much more important when it comes to tide than the sun. The moon has about two and a half times the gravitational pull than that of the sun. So that's what is pulling those tides out of the ocean into the river and as they turn around it pulls the uh, water from the river back into the ocean. That's what creates a tide. We do know that the strongest tides are when the moon is directly above head, which is a full moon, or it's directly below our feet. Full moon and no moon, we have the strongest tides, we have the bigger tidal coefficients, meaning not only that we have more water movement, but the difference between mean low tide and mean high tide is different. We have much more fluctuation in the water. Uh, so that is really important. Now here's where it starts to get, you're going to see the puzzle start to blur a little bit. We all know that the sonar day, the time that it takes the earth to rotate around the sun is 24 hours. But the lunar day, the time that it takes the moon to go around the, uh, the earth is 24 hours and 50 minutes. That's important because you're going to start to see that tides aren't consistent. You can't always go out at 5 in the morning and know that there's going to be a high tide. Tides, highs and lows move throughout the day. There's also something that they call tidal lag. And the tidal lag theory, it's not a theory, this is science. As the moon starts to pull the water out of the ocean, it doesn't start and stop at the same speed. It's got to have that gravitational pull so the water starts 
uh, the tide starts slowly. It builds up. It builds up. It builds up till it's it's at its um, its peak, and then it drops down. So when you start to look at these tide charts, let's say low tide is here, and it comes up to high tide, and then it goes back down to low tide. It doesn't just start and stop at 100 miles an hour. It starts very slowly, works its way up, slows down, hits the top of the tide. Um, it, the top of the tide is slack starts slowly falling faster 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 slowly slowly until it gets to the bottom of the the low tide so all of that into consideration you can start to see how do I put this together well when we get onto this website we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, all of this information and, and, and it's gonna really help us to formulate the best times to be out here with this tidal thing moon phases and everything um, uh, now the next piece of information I want to throw out there is that as we go through these lunar days there are going to be or lunar nights or lunar periods the time it takes the moon to wrap around the earth um, it's going to uh, uh, give us two major periods and two minor periods the major periods will last for approximately two hours the minor periods will last for approximately one hour and these generally coincide with you know the the rising and the falling of the tide and those are going to be the periods of the day that the fish are most active now I always like to uh, try to find as many things that are happening at the same time as I can so if we have a change of light in the morning and that is going to coincide with a major uh, a moon phase, a major period of the moon phase, that's really good because we not only have a change of light but we have a, a period of high activity where the fisher should be moving around more. If that sunrise coincides with a moon phase and you have a high tide that is right at the right period or maybe whatever tide you like to fish generally a high outgoing tide the first couple hours is a really good tide so if we have the sun coming up maybe high tide is as um, is an hour before the sun comes up and we have a good tide starting to fall and we have a major period a major lunar period going on that is really great so what we'll try to do is we will uh, navigate through this website and I'll go over like I say the pages that I use and you'll see how all this corresponds what we can't know is weather conditions and that also has a, a, a big um, say in, in what the fish are going to do so along with the tide sunrise moon phases we have to look at barometric pressure we have to look at storm fronts water temperatures uh, time of year daytime temperatures we'll go over a little bit about some of the days and, and things that I look for uh, when I'm really planning uh, thinking that the fishing is going to be really great out here after we look through uh, some of the pages on the site so let's get into the site and we'll we'll talk about what you need to uh, be looking at on this website okay, let's talk about the tides for fishing website and if you haven't been to this site it's really easy to find all you have to do is uh, Google up tides for fishing and it'll It'll come right up so once you get here I the first thing I want you to look at is the location you're going to want to adjust that location to the area that you will be fishing or maybe the launch that you will be um, uh, launching from that day and that's important because all the information here is coming off of a satellite and we're, we're looking at uh, we'll, we'll call it real-time information when it comes to dialing in on the exact uh, tides and tidal fluctuations. So we want to make sure we have the uh, we're getting our information from the right satellite. So uh, to change this location, you're going to go down to locations, and for you guys know that I fish out of Paradise Point. That's Bishop Cut, Disappointment Slough, wherever you are um, uh, going to be uh, launching from. There's a whole host of areas out here throughout the delta that you can choose from. And, and that, that, that is uh, really important that you choose the one closest to where you're going to be fishing. So I will hit Disappointment Slough here. Now you see that we're in Bishop Cut, Disappointment Slough. And I am going to have up to the minute correct um, uh, times for uh, all of the tides. So uh, in this particular 
or on this particular site, I'm looking f at, at three uh, really important um, uh, pages on it, we'll call them. So the first one, we'll scroll, scroll down till we hit high tides and low tides. I believe that's what it's called. Yes, high tides and low tides. And there is a, uh, there is, oops, sorry there. We'll open this up, and the first thing we're going to look at is this, we'll call it a schematic here. Um, it has everything you need for fishing the delta. It has sun, sunrise, sunset. It shows the tidal fluctuations, uh, low tides, high tides. It gives you, obviously, the time of day. It gives you the tide height, and that, ha that correlates with the... Um, a lot of times it correlates with the you know the moon phase and and what type of what type of tidal coefficient we are going to have you'll also notice that it has the little fish icons down here we remember we talked about four solar periods each day two majors and two minors these are the majors here's a major here here's a major here's a minor here's a minor Every day there's going to be four of these. Now, these will change during the time of day uh, along with the tide. And as we look at this, um, you may start to think, wow, we got a really good period here, a major lunar period, but it's at 3 in the morning. We're probably not going to fish this. On this particular day, we have a high outgoing tide around, uh, oh, the tides are going to start moving around 9 o'clock. We have a minor period of uh, solar activity here around 10. So maybe we want to get out here about 8.30 and uh, maybe sleep in a little bit, get out here at 8.30. And we want to fish this period here from about 9 to 10 right in here. We'll fish through the tide. We've got a low tide here, but look what happens here. As soon as the tide starts to come back in right around 3 o'clock, we have a major solar uh, period of solar activity. So this should be really good fishing in here. So on this particular day, we may want to sleep in, get out on the water here about uh, 8.30, and then fish through till about 5. Now, we're looking at that. One thing that you can correlate with that particular uh, slide there or, or schematic is as you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can check out the salooner activity. And this gives you the majors and the minor periods. Obviously these little fish here, they coincide with what was on that, that first uh, uh, page that we looked at. And um, this is important because if you are not fishing the delta and you're not worried about tides, let's say on this particular day you're going to go fish New Maloney's, you can scroll right down to the salooner activity part of the, uh, the site and know that uh, you have, um, let's just say, high activity from 9 a, 9.20 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. and very high activity from 2.42 to 4.42. So if you're going up to Maloney's, again, you don't get up at 4 in the morning. You want to get to Maloney's about 9 o'clock in the morning and you want to fish till maybe, you know, 5 and, and then head home. So this can be, uh, this particular page can be very important when you're not fishing uh, the delta you're fishing other maybe uh, impoundments in the mother load so with that the last um, the last chart that I'm going to show you is the monthly uh, chart and it gives every day of the month what the tides are going to be uh, the tidal coefficients and the salooner activity uh, I, I also want to say that for you guys that are planning your trips far in advance maybe you're coming from out of the area or maybe you have to plan your vacation uh, several months in advance, you can come up here and Google up, uh, or um, uh, I don't know, you wouldn't be Google up, but you could um, uh, find any month of the year and you'll get the same chart and you will be able to figure out what days that you want to be on the river. And we'll go over that a little bit right now. Um, so here we have, uh, it, it gives you the day, the moon phase, sun up, sun down, and your low tide, high tide, low and high, and tidal coefficients. Here we have a, just a sliver of a moon. We have a decent co, uh, coefficient, but not a whole lot of salooner activity. If you get down here where the full moon is, right in here, look at the variance 
uh, in the tidal coefficients. We've got 95, 100, 101 compared to 74. So we got a lot of tide fluctuation. That's going to really kick things into gear. And especially here on the 12th, we have a whole lot of uh, salooner activity. So these are things we can start to correspond uh, or we can start to cross um, a phase with and look at, hey, these might be the days I want to get off uh, of work. If you're taking a few days off of work and, and you're coming out here, this looks pretty good. But if we go down to a no moon phase right in here, we have nice tidal coefficients, 84, 87, 88, but we also have some really nice uh, salooner activity going on here. These would be very good days to fish. Now, every month is different. Sometimes the full moon has a lot more uh, of the major salooner phases uh, going around the full moon. Sometimes it's no moon. But if I was going to take two or three days off in the month of, where are we here? Uh, wherever it is, whatever month this is, I would be looking at taking, say, the 26th through the 28th off and fishing these days. So, with that, it kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for out here. If you can also uh, kind of uh, look at weather patterns, if we have a weather pattern coming in and we have a, a low barometer, a stable barometer, maybe it's going to bring a little breeze, it's going to put a little bit of um, chop on the water, uh, maybe a little cloud cover, so you're going to have periods of low light. Man, if you can if you can catch it during this time and, and all that is happening and we can put so many of those good things together, the fishing is should be really good during this period. So taking all of that into consideration uh, every time you go fishing uh, is, is going to really help you to plan your day. Now we're going to get back to uh, ending this video, but before we get back to, uh, to that part of the video, I want to make sure that you watch till the end because I'm going to talk about the perfect storm and this is when everything comes together and these these are the days when I am 100% going to be on the water this will this will be a in deep on the Delta exclusive so make sure you watch till the end of the video as we as you see that that site and get all that information I think you guys are start will start to put together the pictures of this puzzle uh, plan your day by thinking you know what I don't have to be out here at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. Maybe it's better to fish the afternoon. Maybe it's better to fish in the morning. You're going to be able to see these charts and see when most of the good things are happening at the same time. This is a in deep on the delta tip for you. You're sitting at home. It's Tuesday. Weatherman comes on the uh, and it, let's just say it's March, April. Weatherman comes on and he says, you know what, Saturday. We're going to have a storm. It's going to be a southern storm. It's not going to be a cold storm. It's going to be a warm storm. It's coming in from the south. Uh, it's going to bring us about an inch of rain. Of course, we like that. That might be a, a hope. Um, it's going to give us about an inch of rain. It's going to start Saturday about noontime, and we're going to have about an inch of rain in a 24-hour period. I want to be out here before the storm because I know that we're going to have low barometric pressure. He's already said it's a warm storm, so it's going to be a pretty level barometer. Uh, I know that we're going to have a little bit of breeze. I know that we're going to have cloud cover. So what I'm going to do is start to look at my tides, tidal coefficients, and I'm also going to be looking at my moon phases. I'm going to put those tides and moon phases together, and I'm going to fish hard as I can. if. If I'm out here Thursday, I'm going to fish as hard as I can throughout the day when I'm having those major periods. Friday is going to be even better, and I guarantee you Saturday morning I will be out here. I'll have my rain gear right on the deck. At 11.30, I'll put the rain gear on. I'm hoping that the weatherman is right. It starts raining at noon. I'm going to fish right through that front. And I, guarantee, I can almost guarantee you, if you're fishing that Friday morning, or excuse me, Saturday morning, it may be slow, you may have some slow periods, but if you can fish through that front, keep fishing while it's raining and go right through, you know, till the fish start biting, you're probably gonna have some of the best fishing of the year. That's just a little tip, 
and and I think if you, if you find that situation and you use the moon and the tides and, and correspond to everything just right, you're going to be you're going to be golden. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you like it, make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you haven't uh, hit the like button, make sure you hit that like button. And until the next video, I'll see you guys on the river.